Who says a Rolls Royce isn't practical? I mean, look at this. It's also the first time I've had company all day. <laughs> hey crew, I've got the key. This very substantial and leather backed key to a Rolls Royce Spectre. And today we're gonna see what it's like to live with. I would start my day by coming over here and unplugging it from a level two charger where it's been sitting connected overnight. Looking at the spacing in my driveway, the dimensions of the Spectre cannot be ignored. The vehicle is almost 18 feet long. So for me to have a gap between the bush and my garage so I can come out and plug and unplug the car easily, I had to bring it so the nose is jutting out just a little bit into the gutter area in front of my driveway. Not far enough that I'm worried it's gonna be hit, but just out enough there and parked just five inches from the edge of the driveway, it being seven feet wide, sitting next to a Jeep Grand Cherokee that my wife is reviewing parked right on the edge. This is how I get a decent margin between the two cars to walk between. And in the case of my family, wheel a stroller through with my kids. Now getting inside the Spectre is a bit, shall we say, different than most vehicles with a door handle here and doors that swing like this because the Spectre has coach doors that open from the front. And with the key fob in my pocket, they unlock just by putting my hand on the handle. Swinging them out, stopping right about there. What a grand entrance. But one that isn't all that wide because these doors are so darn thick. Now to get in, if the doors were swung all the way open, I could just walk in, but here I gotta kinda lasso my leg over and then plop my butt down or do one of these little boot scoot situations. There we go. Hello cabin crew. Thank you for joining me for this day in the life video and I'm gonna close up the door just by putting my foot on the brake. That's convenient. Now by living with the Spectre, I wanna answer one question for you. And that is whether Rolls-Royce's first all electric vehicle still embraces the core Rolls-Royce characteristics of comfort, of quietness, smoothness, effortlessness. And I'll begin by addressing the number one concern for prospective buyers of an all electric Rolls, range. So here on the gauge, it says I have 213 miles of range. I started at 56 miles last night. 10 hours later, this is what I've got. That's not a fully replenished battery. Fully recharged, there would be 266 miles or 291, depending on the wheel size. I've got the 23s, so it's 266. But 213 should be plenty for what I would need or any other Rolls-Royce owner like myself would need in a day. Now that's all well and good, but I have a more pressing personal question. That is whether there's a spot in here to put my large water bottle, along with all the other goodies that I have with me. I've got a charging cord, of course, the Rolls-Royce key. Over here is my phone and then sunglasses. So let's see if we can find spots. I've got this large door pocket, which does seem like it's going to hold the bottle and, oh, there's a plane outside. Wouldn't even know it because it's so quiet in here. Let's see if it's gonna hold. As I close up that door, it does stay. Okay, now for the other things. Smartphone and my sunglasses. Sunglasses can kind of just go in here, or actually, there's a cubby here that would be perfect for sunglasses, but it's also fringe case right here. Perfect for four GoPro batteries and two other GoPro minis. So I'm gonna use that for those instead. Sunglasses there, wireless charging slot here, and then what else we got? Got the key fob and charging cable, maybe those there and key fob there. Slide back the wood because I want to look at that and not open cup holders. And we're good. Practical storage in the Rolls-Royce Spectre. Do, 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 do. I forgot something at home. Shoot. Am I going to have the turning radius to flip around here? But also, what's that turn signal sound? It's like the sound of metal clanging, and in fact it is. The noise of clanging on Rolls-Royce's aluminum air vents is what they pulled the turn signal sound for this car. But while this sounds cool for a second, this could get a bit irritating. Okay, well now to the turning radius. Wheel cranked. Oh my, that is a phenomenal turning circle. It makes this big boat 
much less daunting to drive. And with maneuverability assured, what else is there to keep me from genuinely enjoying every minute of my commute? I mean, I'm sitting on a pillow, a pillow with better ergonomics and a massage function, which I'll activate here. This electric powertrain is smoother than even the twin turbo V12 that powers every other Rolls Royce. The cabin is so gosh darn quiet. I mean, you heard it when I opened the door earlier. Outside. Inside. You're just kept apart from every other nuisance outside the vehicle and that includes the road surface. Even a terrible one like this with all these potholes and grates. I barely hear it and I barely feel it. There are little ripples that pass through to my bottom. It's so easy to direct this car. I could drive it with a pinky. Though that requires a little bit of effort. Maybe the index finger. That's... That's better. You just float. I don't know how else to put it. Your day just gets instantly better the moment you get inside the Spectre and start driving it. Braking is enjoyable. Accelerating is enjoyable. Sitting here at a stoplight is enjoyable because you are cocooned in comfort and your drive requires the bare minimum of effort. I don't even have to brake all that much if I don't want to. Just hit the B button here and it activates the braking regeneration so when I take my foot off the throttle it slows the vehicle 80% for me. I just do the final 20%. Now of course as a Rolls Royce owner I own a $2,000 espresso machine. Makes me anything I want. Except when it's on the fritz. So today I'm going to have to settle for Starbucks. Hello, can I get you? Hello, may I please have a grande decaf latte? Yeah, what else? That's it. All right, see you right up ahead, thank you. Great, thank you. Probably should have got the caffeine, actually. This car is so comfortable it could put me to sleep. Oh, you know what? I've got the auto hold function. I don't need to put my foot on the brake. Thank you. They didn't give me the insert to make sure the liquid doesn't pour out of the cup. Well, I guess it's a good thing I'm driving a Rolls as smooth as can be. The next leg of my commute is going to bring me onto the highway, so I have to see whether the Spectre has the go fast to make me feel comfortable doing something like this. Here we go. <laughs> Just instantly going. 577 horsepower, 664 pound-feet of torque, delivered right away. No problems at all. At least getting up to going very slowly in the right lane. The next test is going to be the passing power, if I can get out of this situation. Okay, I spotted a gap, just point and go. That is the brilliance of electric power. And now we're coasting on the highway. I'm gonna activate the adaptive cruise control and steering assistance that we have here. And this is not a hands-free system, but alas, I can take my hands off just to show you how it stays in the center of the lane and me not working the gas or brake. It's slowing and speeding up appropriately to keep that following distance, but it does want my hands back on the wheel. I do have a lane change assist, so I can indicate. And when a lane opens up, it's monitoring. Now it sees an opening and now it goes. These are the kind of features that do relax you a little bit more. And of course, there's the natural quietness of this interior. This is a really loud road surface. I know, because in every other vehicle I drive, it's like, oh, in here. It's nothing. All right, I've arrived at the office with my massaging seat still going. And that's good because otherwise I'd be stressed right now because my personal assistant has called in sick. So I have to park the Spectre myself. Only I don't actually have to do that because this vehicle has an automatic parking assistant. So when I find a space that feels right for me, 
I just come to a stop, initiate the reverse parking with my foot on the brake first to start. I'll let it do all the hard work. That's the first attempt. It'll now correct. Don't disappoint me, Spectre. I spent far too much money upon you. $500,000. You do not park for me. Perfectly. Here we are. Let's see how it's done. Getting out requires as much effort as anything else in this car. One pull of the door handle to open and a second that you hold for as long as you want the door to open. Well, it's a sunny day. Didn't even check the weather. Not that it would matter because if it was raining, there's always a built-in umbrella for me. Now checking out the auto parks positioning in the space. It is certainly aligned on this side, but within the lane markings, and it's like the system just knows it needs all this margin on this side because the doors are so thick that you couldn't really, if someone was parked right here, open the doors any further. If you were any closer, couldn't get in or out at all. Well, now it's off to work at my executive office job. Looks pretty good. Ooh, GT350R. Man, that was a difficult morning. I really didn't want to have to fire the office admin, but I caught the guy trying on my shoes. My shoes. That's a line you just don't cross. <sighs> All this decision making has built up an appetite. What am I going to eat for lunch? Now, a Rolls Royce owner is not going to be satisfied with your average lunch. It's going to need to be healthy, yes, but also delicious and customizable. And of course, a little extra expensive. That's why I'm going to uh, Bristol Farms. I figured rather than eating in my stuffy office, why not indulge here in the car? And while I am here, let me talk you through what we got going on. So let's just say Todd and Harold and Hubert. I don't know, what other fancy names are there? Let's say they all join me for lunch. Well, unless they were all giants, we would fit here comfortably. I'm six feet tall, sitting behind my own seat, I've got knee room, I have just enough headroom, I've got my own climate control, my own rear heated seat, and in the console, I've got my own USB-C for myself and, was it Hubert? Hubert back here? That's good. And up front, Todd and I have all the same niceties, plus ventilation and massage for our seats. I get heating for my steering wheel, and everyone can appreciate the ambiance, the lit up open pour wood, the specter illuminated fascia, the twinkling starlight headliner. But honestly, my favorite part about living with this cabin is that Rolls-Royce didn't go too futuristic with things. They kept the familiar, the analog, the dials, the buttons, the fact that this touchscreen isn't too complicated and yet it's very responsive. And if you don't want to touch it, you can just use this dial down here. The fact that the gauge cluster is simplified. It just has the information you care about. And then there's the redundancy of the head-up display. It's just so effortless. I'd spend a lot of time in this cabin, if for nothing else than just a reset button on life. And when it's time to go back to the office to make more million dollar decisions, the Spectre's shape and style is worth more than a few lingering stares. Outside of work, I want to enjoy some of my hobbies like playing golf or tennis. So let's see how the Spectre accommodates. Nice and deep. Kind of shallow though. Let's start with the golf clubs. Okay, looks good. Okay, so at least one person can go golfing. Yeah, but I'm actually more interested in playing tennis today. And I don't just have balls and rackets. I actually have a tennis ball machine, a hitting machine. Is this going to fit in there? Is there any other space inside? Okay, so we got the charging cable storage there. That doesn't help with the overall capacity. So I'm gonna lay this down and lift up this very heavy machine. Not gonna work that way. Let's try it on its side. We got this handle to deal with here. I don't think this is gonna clear. Even if the handle wasn't there, that would not fit inside the trunk. So I'm gonna have to think of something else for this. 
Okay, so let's just try the rackets and balls first. These should fit no issue. Yes, that is great. But what about this hitting machine? Okay, I think I've got the answer. Had to make some adjustments to take care of the cabin and move the vehicle out into the street so I can get that coach door swung super wide. But this, I think, will work. See, I'm going to just put this right about there. And now, Success! Who says a Rolls Royce isn't practical? I mean, look at this. It's also the first time I've had company all day. <laughs> Boy, you still have to get them out. Let's go play some tennis. Boy, it's a good thing I made all those accommodations to bring my big, heavy paperweight with me because the ball machine is not working. As we'll see, the launcher is working fine, but this feeder right here, yeah, that's that's not turning like it should. So, guess I'm gonna be doing things the old-fashioned way. So today I learned it's harder to play tennis with a GoPro on your head than it is to drive and talk. I'm going to summarize my thoughts on what it's like to live with a Spectre during a night drive. But before that, I want to return to charging and range. Because I've done just about everything I could think of using a Spectre for in a given day. Not starting with a full charge either, and still having 134 miles of range left. But, let's just say it was a really heavy use day. I was doing a ton of driving, and I was actually going to drain the battery. Well, it wouldn't be as easy to fill up the Spectre as going to any gas station on any street corner. But here in Southern California at least, the availability of DC fast chargers isn't all that bad and you can find them easy enough via app. In fact, I actually have some right here not far from my house and their output is very good. I can go from 10 to 80 percent of the Rolls-Royce Spectre's battery capacity in 36 minutes. Yes, a lot longer than it would take to refill an internal combustion car's gas tank, but not horrible. So we're gonna do that now in preparation for the night drive. And then actually using the charger should be pretty easy. Just open both ports, grab the connector, plug it in, and tap my card. And then we should be good to go. Oh, yeah. And that's actually happened at all these machines, there's something wrong with them. And this is just the reality of public charging. It doesn't matter if it's a small off-brand one like this or a big one like, like Electrify America, they always seem to have issues. And certainly, if you had like no range left in your battery, this would be a very frustrating situation and very un-Rolls-Royce, effortless, casual, relaxing, not good. And so the answer really, if you're living with this car, is just to always keep it Somewhat local. Now on to the night drive. The night has come, and with it, the conclusion to my day in the life with the Rolls-Royce Spectre. Look at this interior. Starlights shining. The Spectre fascia. The ambiance. I began this video by pondering out loud whether an all-electric Rolls-Royce could uphold the company's pillars of style and comfort and smoothness, quietness, effortlessness. And after living with this Spectre, the answer to me is unequivocally yes. And the fact that it is an electric vehicle in many ways actually makes it excel beyond my expectations for a Rolls-Royce but that doesn't mean it's completely without blemish. On the inconsequential side of things, the turn signal sound is a bit too sharp for me. It's a noise I would want to cancel as soon as possible if I was sitting at a light for a long time. But building up in terms of impact to your daily life, these coach doors are 
far and away some of the coolest ways to get in and out of a vehicle. They're on the level of dihedral doors from McLarens and scissor doors from Lamborghinis. Unfortunately, the practical side of getting in and out of this vehicle is a bit tough. For one, you just can't park very close to anyone, and sometimes that's something you can control, but other times you come out from your shopping or whatever, and someone is parked too close to you. In this vehicle, that would mean you'd have to go to the passenger side to actually get in. Oh, and when the door is open, unless it's fully swung wide, getting inside looks a bit awkward. And last is the question of charging. And this one could actually be argued in two different ways because unless you hoard fuel, you're not gonna be able to refuel your internal combustion vehicle at home overnight, but certainly with an EV and a level two charger, you can replenish your battery overnight with enough hours plugged in. But if you plan on taking a distance journey, of course, there are gas stations at pretty much every corner in the United States, whereas there are not DC fast charging stations, and if there are, they won't always be reliable. And yet, with the total range available in this car, and the fact that if plugged in overnight, you're at least gonna have 200 plus miles to use in a given day, I don't think the realistic use case of a Spectre is ever going to come into conflict with the question mark of available public charging, unlike for some other EVs. So, what it really comes down to is the fact that the Spectre is so good. It is the best Rolls Royce for all those pillars that I've ever driven. And so it is therefore the most serene way to spend time behind the wheel. I have loved living with this car. I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV day in the life. If you want to see more night driving, I've got a full night drive video for it. If you want to see more performance driving or other variables behind the wheel, check out my POV drive review. If you like this one, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified, and I'll see you next time.